Hi everyone, welcome to Bible Blast and Lesson 20. Yesterday we talked about the 10 plagues which God sent to Egypt. And of course the 10th plague was the most terrifying of all. That was God's judgment coming upon the land for their idolatry. Now of course the Israelites were also sinners. And the Bible clearly tells us that all have fallen short of God's glory. We've all sinned. But God made the way of escape when he told them to take a spotless lamb and kill it and put its blood on the side post and the top of the door. So that when the Lord came and saw the blood, he would pass over the threshold of their door and not allow the angel of death to come in. And of course, all of the homes where the Egyptians lived that did not have the lamb's blood, they suffered the judgment of the Lord. Now the blood of the Lamb points forward to Jesus. Can you remember when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Well, Jesus is our Passover Lamb, and His blood takes away our sin. And His blood covers the laws that we have broken. And the Bible tells us if we will repent of our sin, and put our trust alone in Jesus, that God will forgive every sin we've ever committed and grant us the gift of everlasting life. And so God led the Israelites out of Egypt, and by day he led them with a pillar of cloud. And by night he led them with a pillar of fire, so they could travel day or night. And they camped by the Red Sea. Now back in Egypt, the people were saying to Pharaoh, why did we even do this? Why did we let those Israelites go? And they've gone off with our gold and our silver, and they're not here to serve us anymore. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he decided, I'm going to go get them, because his son had died as well. And so he called for his army and 600 chariots, and he started off after the Israelites. And the Israelites, they had the Red Sea in front of them and they heard the army of the Egyptians behind them and they were terrified and they cried out to Moses, why did you bring us out here? We're gonna die, we either gonna drown or we're gonna be killed by the army. You should have just let us stay back in Egypt. That's what we wanted to do and that's what we tried to tell you. We just wanted to stay and serve the Egyptians. And God spoke to Moses and said, tell the people to go forward. And Moses said to the people, stand still and you will see the salvation of the Lord. And after today, you will see the army of Egypt no more. And so God took the pillar from in front of the Israelites and put it behind them to separate between them and the army of Egypt. And God said to Moses, take your staff and hold it over the sea. And that's what he did. And God sent a wind and the sea parted. And Moses said to the people, go forward. And so the Israelites started crossing the Red Sea on dry land. And there was a wall of water on the left and a wall of water on the right. And the Israelites were able to cross in safety all the way to the other side. And God sent a sandstorm so that the Egyptians could not follow them until the Israelites were safely on the other side. And then God removed all the obstacles and Pharaoh was able to say, go get them. And so the army took off through the Red Sea on dry land, but they had problems and the wheels started falling off their wagons and they realized their God is fighting for them. The God of the Israelites is fighting for them and we don't stand a chance. And so Moses took his rod as God instructed him and said, hold it over the sea again. And God closed the waters 
And when the Egyptians saw the water coming, they tried to flee, but they couldn't. It was too late. And the water covered them and they drowned. And the Bible tells us there was nobody survived that. Now, it doesn't tell us that Pharaoh drowned. We don't know if he did or if he didn't. But God did say he wanted the Egyptians to know that he is God. So somebody had to survive to be able to go back and tell the Egyptians that. It's possible that Pharaoh didn't go into the sea. And maybe some of the army didn't go in either. Maybe they just waited on the other side. I guess we'll be able to ask God that one day. Anyway, when the Israelites saw that the army was no more and they were no longer in any danger, there's a picture of the, the Egyptians going after the Israelites. But when the army was all drowned, then the women sang a song and they had tambourines. And the words are in the Bible. And they say, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and rider thrown into the sea. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and rider thrown into the sea. The Lord is God, my strength, my song, he's now become my victory. The Lord, my God, my strength, my song, has now become my victory. The Lord is God, and I will praise him, my Father is God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is God, and I will praise him, my Father is God, and I will exalt him. Now you'd think after all that, there would be no more complaints from the Israelites. Nope, not so. Human nature, you know what I mean? They started complaining. When we were back in Egypt, we had meat and bread as much as we wanted. Did you bring us out here to starve to death? They asked Moses. And the Lord said to Moses, tell the people I will provide for them. And he provided a special kind of bread, which they called manna. Because when the people woke up, the manna was all over the ground. And so they collected it. And Moses said, you can collect enough for your families for one day. But don't save any for tomorrow, because the Lord will provide new manna every morning. Well, some of the Israelites did not obey that command. In fact, they did save some for the next day. But when they went back to get it, it was full of worms. And the Lord said to Moses, Well, how long are these people going to disobey me and not keep my commands? And so Moses talked to them and made sure that they only took enough for the one day, except when the Sabbath was coming. The Lord said on that day, they would be allowed to gather twice as much so that on the Sabbath, they would have their food already and not need to do any work. And when the Sabbath came, the bread that had been saved from the day before did not get worms. So the Lord did take care of all of their needs. And at night, he sent quail, which are birds, for meat. Okay, so now you're thinking, okay, well, they're not going to complain anymore now. Oh, no, they still found something to complain about. They said to Moses, did you bring us out here in the wilderness so we could die of thirst? Ah, the complaining goes on and on. And so the Lord said to Moses, take your staff and smite the rock. And when Moses did that, fresh water poured from the rock so the people would have water to drink. So there's a picture of that. Now they continued on their journey and Jethro, who was Moses' father-in-law, he met Moses in the wilderness. And when Moses told him all the things that God had done, he was just amazed and he said, God, your God is God. And he listened to Moses judging the people all day. 
listening to their problems and coming up with decisions on what they needed to do to fix things. And Jethro said to Moses, this is no good. If you're doing this all day, you're going to wear out. You're not going to be able to continue to lead the people. You need to, to choose some godly men who will be over thousands and over hundreds and over fifties and over tens and let them make some decisions. They could make decisions about the small problems and only bring the big ones to you. And so Moses listened to the advice of his father-in-law Jethro. And then Jethro went back to his home and they continued on their journey. Now, I want to show you my picture of from Answers in Genesis. There is Moses holding up a staff so that the sea would part. And there is a picture of the manna that God sent and the quail that God sent. And over here, there's the fresh water that poured from the rock. So you can see that we have a mighty God, don't we? We serve a mighty God who is there for us and who keeps his promises. And so I hope that you'll come back tomorrow where we find out what happens next. Thank you for listening and bye for now.